In this video, my goal was to use some of the materials that I had around my desk, like some student grade paper and some leftover watercolor on my palette, to make a few quick and easy watercolor paintings based on reference photos that I pulled from Unsplash. The links to these photos are in the YouTube description if you are interested in looking them up. So first I have this field of flowers with a big wide open sky. This looks like uh, I could be on a flower farm. The field looks pretty, um, like there are definitely planned rows. So that's something to look into when we get to the flowers. But first I started with a wet sky. So the first half of the paper, I got wet with clean water and then using the wet on wet technique, picked up some blue and made just kind of like a subtle watery texture. I made sure to leave behind some white space for the clouds and I only left uh, a little bit of the sky, really that nice sky blue to kind of mimic this blendy texture. And then at the bottom of the part that I got wet, remember I only got the top, the top half of my little piece of paper wet, I uh, just kind of like lined the bottom almost with some dark paint to give that nice skyline the difference between the land and the sky. And then while the paint was still wet again, I took some brown paint and kind of just painted a few blobs basically <laughs> along the sky and then uh, layered some green on after that for the grass. So because I'm using the wet on wet technique, all of these, um, my paint strokes here are blending into the wet paper. And that's exactly what I want with these loose watercolor landscapes. Then I tried to paint that little house that's in the corner there. My house is much bigger on the painting than it actually is in the reference photo, which is fine. Um, but because I was using the wet on wet technique, the sides of the house kind of went, you know, all over the place on the wet paper. And so I tried to kind of smooth down those edges. And then I added a few more trees along the wet horizon. And again, I'm using the wet on wet technique here because I really want that loose watercolor feel. I tried to only spend five, maybe 10 minutes on each of these paintings that I'm doing here. And um, just to practice my sketching skills with watercolor and to lean into that really loose feel of, of landscapes and what happens when you let watercolor kind of do its thing. So after I've painted that top half, now I'm gonna uh, paint the bottom portion with the flowers. So I got the paper wet and then with my pink watercolor, I painted some lines uh, kind of horizontally but at a slight angle down toward the bottom right hand corner there some pink lines where the flowers are going to be and then I left behind white space on purpose um, and I left behind more white space than I thought I'd need partly because the paper is wet so I know that the paint is going to bleed and run over into the white space and so I, I wanted to make sure that I still had some shape to it. And then in the white space in between, I just added a few lines of green. And then I'm, I'm gonna go back and forth between adding some more pink and then adding some more green to just kind of give this flower, orchard, flower farm, flower field, whatever you wanna call it, give it some shape so that you can see those cool lines between the rows of the flowers. Because I think that's partly what makes this photo so beautiful is that there are all these rows of flowers. And then to add the texture of multiple flowers so it's not just rows of pink, I cleaned off my paintbrush and then um, just tapped with my clean paintbrush on the paint. And so the water from the paintbrush is going to kind of act as like a paint remover or maybe paint texturizer might be a better word for it. Um, and then leave behind some of that white space. And there you go. I added just a little bit more paint to the house uh, to give it a little more definition, but there is my loose watercolor version of that flower field. Next, I'm going to try to paint this pot of flowers. Uh, my paper wasn't quite big enough, <laughs> long enough to really 
get the pot and so by the end you'll see that the the pot that's holding this it, it's a little wonky but i really was just trying to practice my loose floral technique in using blobs and watercolor and color to mimic the shape of the flowers without having to get them perfectly so these flowers i'm not even sure what they are but though they are beautiful uh the flowers seem to be kind of stacked onto each other and more like a stock shape and so that's what kind of what i'm doing i'm just taking my watercolor and i'm making sure that it's pretty watery in places and just kind of making blobs in that like vertical shape but i'm making sure to leave behind white space between the blobs so that i can still have some of that definition and some of the blobs as you can see are like really thick and some of them are very small more like dots and um, so that's just a key something that's really key with loose watercolor florals is to leave behind white space wherever you can but then also not pay too much attention to getting the shape exactly right now i'm adding some leaves um just kind of off to the side and in the middle my green is not quite the green that it is in the painting mine is more of a viridian green where i think it probably should be more of a, a hooker's green but that's okay i still think that it looks pretty cool and then i'm just kind of adding leaves randomly um sometimes following where i see a leaf shape on the on the reference photo and sometimes just putting it uh in between the flowers and then not being afraid to flowers but the more you practice it the better you'll be at it so don't be afraid to you know have a big blendy mess that's the whole point of this and then I just added a little pot kind of uh, building it around the flowers at the end the pots not the most important part so um, moving on to the next loose watercolor illustration there's this field of yellow flowers. Disclaimer up front, this painting was not my favorite, partly because the yellow that was on my palette wasn't quite uh, saturated enough. I didn't have quite enough yellow in order to get the uh, effect that I really wanted to, but uh, I kept this in just because I thought it would be useful for you to see that sometimes these paintings don't work out the way that I want them to. Uh, so I first I painted the sky similar to how we did in the first illustration and I got the whole paper wet this time so I painted the sky blue and then I while the paper was still wet I just kind of tapped on the yellow in the bottom and a few uh, little blobs kind of in in the sky because there are some of those flowers in the very foreground that you can see in the sky right and so that's kind of what i was going for with these paintings i'm trying to paint all of um these at once and then i added some green on top of the yellow and then painted the stems the uh the stalks to link the flowers to the grass and ultimately it kind of was a failure <laughs> it didn't turn out like i wanted to and so i moved on i didn't spend uh, much more time on it uh, mostly because I knew that I wanted to work on something else and I didn't have enough paint on my palette to get to the desired, what, what I wanted the painting to look like. So now I'm just kind of searching through Unsplash, which is a royalty-free photo site, like I said, to get another reference photo. And I found this mountain photo that I thought would work really well. So first I'm going to start with painting the sky and I'm painting it this blue and this time I'm not getting the paper wet because I am um, using, I'm going to use my paint kind of to outline the mountain as I did along the bottom there. So instead of just like getting the paper wet with a straight bottom, I added the paint and then used my paintbrush to kind of outline the top of the mountain. And that's because I want to use the white space underneath to form and shade the mountain especially because this mountain is snowy i um, want it with watercolor it's especially important to know how to utilize white space and so that's what i'm going to do 
instead of painting the snow, I'm going to paint around the snow and pa paint the rock on the mountain, um, like paint the shadows and the rock around the snow on the mountain to give it some definition. So I started with this kind of light brown. Um, and the way that you make watercolor lighter or darker is uh, in its purest pigment instead of adding like white or black is to either add more paint or add more water. And so sometimes I have more pigmented paint and sometimes I have more watery paint. Off to the side you see I did kind of like a, a cross pattern on the right hand side of that mountain and that was kind of just to mimic the design that I saw on the mountain. Painting mountains can be really intimidating because how are you even supposed to get the shapes right? But my best advice is to just do your best. See if you can recognize shapes like I recognize that grid pattern and um, try to replicate it where you can and just lean into the fact that it's going to be imperfect. Um, but what I like to do with mountains especially is to start with a light layer and then add dark layers as you go along. Generally when I paint with watercolor I go from light to dark because it's much much easier to make something darker than it is to make something lighter. So that's why I go from light to dark and I just kind of added some blobs and lines and shadows leaving behind white space and um, then the contrast between the dark and the light uh, made that little mountain piece really cool, I thought. I really liked this one. So now I'm looking for another one. And uh, while I'm searching for that, just one more thing about the mountain. Just if it doesn't look exactly like mine, or if it doesn't look as you're painting mountains, it looks kind of wonky. Just know that the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. Okay, so for this next mount, for this next painting, I am painting this kind of beautiful flower bridge scene. So I'm starting with a tree with those purple flowers off to the side. Whenever I paint trees, especially with blossoms, I paint the leaf or the blossom part first, and then I add the branches underneath. I just find that to be a really a much easier way to get a natural movement to the plants when I do it that way. And this painting is basically just filled with a whole lot of flowers. And so I'm using, basically I'm just putting a bunch of blobs <laughs> of flowers down at the bottom there. And now I'm going to try painting the bridge. Uh, so I am, I painted the top two rails first, and then I'm just kind of adding the stairs along with it and doing my best to replicate the shape of this bridge. It's easier for me to paint what I see. If I'm trying to paint something that I see, it's easier to break things down into shapes as opposed to telling myself, I'm painting a bridge. So instead of saying, I'm gonna paint a bridge, I looked at the bridge and thought, okay, well, I see some lines and some curves. And so I'm just gonna try to paint those lines and curves and forget the fact that I'm painting a bridge. And uh, that usually helps me a lot more when I'm sketching with loose watercolor like this especially. So now I'm adding more purple blobs and then some green blobs because you see that there are some like leaves from other trees behind the blue ones, I mean the purple ones. And then I'm gonna add some brown off to the right hand side because it looks like the tree that the bridge is going into is more shadowed and maybe has more brown branches. And so that's kind of where I was going with that and then adding some water at the bottom. And there we go. Those are all of my paintings. Uh, all of them took maybe, like I said, between five and 10 minutes to paint total. I sped up this whole video um, to two times the speed. So my hand was going a little faster than I was going in real life, but it's always really fun for me to learn to be loose and not be perfect and recycle paintings at the end of the day if I don't like them, but also always learn from the experience of looking at a photo and seeing if I can replicate it in any kind of loose way without being perfect but still have fun along the way. So I hope that you had a good time watching this video and that it was helpful for you. If you want to uh, see more videos like this, 
please hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments what you thought about this one and if there are any requests for videos in the future. And then if you try any of these or this technique and tag me on Instagram, my handle is this writing desk, um, you'll have a chance to be featured in my Instagram stories. So thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.